A dusty wind kisses my cheeks. Buried in sand, we press forward one at step at a time. We have nowhere else to go, after all. Because our models, the Devil and Popola models, are defective. Record. Uh, record. Transitions in the project's initial phase. When first we woke, they were there were still people. They had flesh, egos, emotions, souls, and they issued us a single order. Function as observers of Project Gestalt. This is the sole mission of the twins, uh, the twin Devil and Popola models. It is the only reason we exist at all. We were the latest model, though many companions shared our, our appearance. There was a sparkle in, our, in all of our eyes, a sense of pride that we had been entrusted with humanity's future. And yes, there was anxiety as well. Though we existed as a pair, we've shared destiny burden as a pair. Uh, destiny's burden is a pair, okay. And because of that, we all hesitation was swept away. Each pair was given their own cities as, as observation areas. We were ordered to guide the replicants uh, with our own hands. All for the sake of the promised time that we would one day, that one way, one day, eh, I can't speak, that one day would one day arrive. That would one day arrive. I could still could say it. We were the only ones who could handle such a duty. We were observers, after all. Ah, watch out! Duval staggers and falls into the soft yet unforgiving sand. I hurry to her side and sigh with, with relief when I find she's not seriously hurt. Are you alright? Sorry, sis. Guess I spaced out there for a bit. She smiles, the same wry smile I know so well, as she rubs absent at her leg. Absently at the leg. It is wrap wrapped in a white bandage. Your bandage is coming undone. Here, let me change it. It's alright, Popola. Come on, we have to go before we lose the light. You won't get, uh, be going anywhere if, if Sen gets into that, into that thing. Now quit whining and hold still. I'll be, I'll be quick. The little grunts and turn, turns away. I take it as a consent. Soon we are resting in the shade of, of a nearby rock as I pull the bandage free. Artificial skin, torn and bloodied, peeks out from beneath the bandage. Judging by Devola's lack, current lack of amb amb ambulator, ambulatory control, I imagine that the circuitry underneath has been damaged as well. Take a deep, taking a deep breath, I... Oh. As expected, wiring in the nerve circuitry has been damaged. Replacing it will require new connectors, as well as some tools. None of which is easy to find in the desert. Sorry about this, sis, mutters Devol. That wry smile again. It kills me every time. Don't you dare apologize, I respond. You've done nothing wrong. I calmly change the bandage, trying not to let my worry show. I make it as tight as possible so no sand can slip us inside. It's all I can do until I get the proper materials. But, but that's going to be a tall order considering our current location condition. I'm sorry, sister. Okay, now you're apologizing? Oh, now you're apologizing. You, we both apologize while insisting that the other's apology isn't necessary. It's kind of funny in a way. Such a trivial exchange such under, under such circumstances. We laugh together, the sound echoing out across the desert before being stolen by the cooling evening wind. Report regarding the increase in relapses. There has been, there has to be some way to prevent relapses. Devola's sharp voice echoes through the private quarters. You must be quiet, sister. Replicants will hear. Pfft. They wouldn't understand even if, if they did. That might be true, but regardless. Annoyed by my hesitation, Devola crossed her legs and scowls. The black scrawl took another victim. She says, "That's three this month." It's pretty. It's it's spreading way too fast. Let's wait and see what happens. I'm tired of hearing you say that. Her shout makes me jump, just like a, just a little, but enough to for her to notice. Seeing that, her eyes suddenly open wide. I'm sorry, sis. It's not your fault. I shouldn't have lashed out like that. It's okay. I understand. It's all going wrong. Uh, yeah. You can feel it too, right? I. When I was first assigned to Project Gestalt, I was over I was over the moon with pride. But now my chest hurts just thinking about it. If it were to fail, before we knew it, the replicants has gained a sense of self, and the black sprawl started raging out of control. It moved fast, so fast, like a wind. Popola and I would go. Popola and I would go to the observation room and act like it was all okay, 
we talk to the replicants as if we uh, we didn't have a care in the world. But at night, we just hold each other and share the horror of it all. I'm glad you're with me, murmurs Popola. I could have handled being an observer alone. We were able to endure because we had each other, I replied softly. Did the humans see this coming? Is that why they made a twin model? Were they really so clever? Were they really so cruel? I couldn't have done this myself. I would have des descended into madness. I simply couldn't bear such a burden all alone. When I get the chance, I'm going to try contacting another city, she says. Maybe these these anomalies are a localized phenomenon. I pray that's the case, I reply. Even if, even if there were no no use ourselves, things will still work out if all the other if the other obser obser observers can pull through. Don't worry, it's going to be okay. But it wasn't okay. Nothing was okay. All thanks to a pair of Devola and Popola models from another town. The wind rubs my cheeks, sand greases, greases my skin. It's growing cold out there. We walk with renewed purpose, hoping to make up for the lost time. Devola loses her balance every now and then. It gets bad after a while. And, oh, and then, oh yeah. I slip myself under her under her arms so we we won't fall again, we press on. Oh, so she won't. Is your leg alright? Oh, I doubt I'll be dancing anytime soon, but yeah, it's fine. She smiles as she says this, but I can tell she doesn't have much left. And yet she continues to smile. Oh also I don't worry. I remember when our resistance allies injured her leg. I was furious, beyond fury. I wanted to scream and cry and lose myself in it. But then she smiled, and all the rage just drifted away. To think we had the same face, yet such different smiles. One day, I realized how she reminded me of the martyrs. I'd been so I'd seen in old records. That was the day we decided to leave our town forever. Record of Project Assault's end. Our role as observers ended in the, when, on the day Project Assault collapsed. I'll do the, the actions of. The, the Vola and Popola models from another town. With the original Gestalt lost, humanity was doomed in an inevitable extinction. Knowing this, we gathered what, rem remaining, what remaining replicant data we could find and launched into the surface of the moon. And though successful, uh, success was unlikely, as finding a lost sand, uh, sand grain in the desert, we still had to attempt it. We still had to try. We were androids, you see. Protecting humanity was our instinct. Other androids, Beholden to the, to the same instinct, began to di direct their hate at the Volan Popola models who snuffed out humanity. It started small, a few offhand remarks, the occasional glance. But even the smallest things have, vo have weight, and enough of them combined, that weight eventually becomes a boulder. Emotions boil over, uh, boiled over, remarks became jeers, and soon enough, my sister and I were the perfect target for persecution. At first, we simply accepted the fact that our friends turned on us. It was almost unavoidable, unavoidable, I suppose. We were observers for Gosh, Project Gestalt, after all. And while we didn't cause it to fail, the people who did, well, they looked just like us. So we accepted it. We took the resentment and scorn, and we endured it. Uh, we endured. Because as crazy as it sounds, I think we actually felt responsible. We moved from town to town in an effort to avoid persecution, but in one such town, my seemingly infinite, infinite patience finally broke. My sister, Devola, met with an unprovoked violent met with unprovoked violence at the hands of a resistance member. She said something in response to his taunts, something quiet. And though her words were ambiguous, he slashed her leg nearly in two. My vision narrowed, everything went red, and then she smiled at me. It's okay, sis, there's nothing we can do. But it was too late. My emotions were no longer in my control. I'm simply not, not strong enough to stand aside and let some the most impo important person in the world come to harm. Devola and I left the town the same day. Violence like that wouldn't stop. It was going to happen again. And it wouldn't be coming from just one person. So rather than, than let us uh, let them kill us, we ran. I guess it was the greatest resistance member, a uh, resistance I could muster. He loses the sun as dark cl uh, clouds gather over overhead. We continue, to, we continue our march. A cold wind blasts us, stealing the little body heat we have left. I smell rain in the air. We continue to mar our march. Sometimes we hear animals howling in the distance. It makes us flinch every time, but we continue our march. 
because even this is better than suffering at the hands of our fellow androids. Why must we suffer this persecution? I know we're the same model as the androids who doomed humanity, so I understand that part. At least a little, anyway. But at the same time, we're not them. We're not the same. We are who we are. And that Devola and Popola were who they are. They were. That's how I felt when I saw Devola being hurt. I wanted to shout it at everyone. I wanted to scream. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one Devola. And for her, that's there's only one me. Uh, there's only me. No one can take the other's place. Rain falls from the sky. It st stimulates our senses, n sensation nerves like gold needles. We need maintenance badly, but that's a pipe dream, I suppose. No android would dare help a pair of outcasts like us. Are you cold, Devola? It's alright, as long as you're with me, sis. I feel the same. We press our bodies together to try and retain heat. It's cold now, much worse than the searing heat of midday, but we just smile at each other and keep pressing on. There's another camp on the other side of the desert, a new camp. If we can just get there, I can fix Div finally fix Devola's leg. Yet, I wonder if there's any anywhere in this planet that will take us. Hey, what's wrong? It's nothing, don't worry about it. I do what I can to suppress the anxiety in my chest and keep walking. The rain grows worse, it lashes at us without pause. Is this our punishment? I reach out and... The rain flows down her cheeks like tears. I reach over and gently wipe it away. She smiles, but seems surprised. There's no point in doing that, you know. But there is. Because I swore to myself that I would stay with her forever. For that is the fate. We twin androids have been assigned. Ooh, reading club's over. Okay. <laughs> the failure to manage the area. Resulting in the collapse of, of the Gestalt system, which led to the decimation of the human race. Due to the discovery of this instability, the twin system has was removed from future Android production designs. Following the incident, the, the Devola and Popola models were not dismantled. However, in order to prevent further unexpected behavior, they underwent a memory wipe. Furthermore, they were pre-programmed to, ge to generate constant feelings of guilt. 